China in 2024, the defense spending is going up by 7%, the most for five years. You've had 29 consecutive years of military expenditure growth, the most of any country in the world. Since 2022, China has increased military drills around Taiwan. It's escalated since the new Taiwanese president was inaugurated in May. China is not a fan of him. Uh, since then, there's been almost daily activity involving China's warships, drones, cyber attacks against Taiwan. China is getting ready to invade Taiwan, isn't it? There is only one China. Taiwan is part of China, and the government of the People's Republic of China is the sole legitimate government for the totality of China. The exact status between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait is the unfinished civil war back in 1949. So, That's ever since the beginning of the 1980s, okay. China does not want to use a war to solve this unification problem. You don't to... want to use a war, but you're surrounding it with ships, drones, cyber attacks, and making lots of threats. Each time when the separatists in Taiwan want to push the edge of the envelope, they will come across more and more demonstration of the commitment of the Chinese nation to eventually achieve peaceful reunification or otherwise. Your defense I... minister said anyone who dares to pursue independence for Taiwan will be crushed into pieces and face destruction. Sounds like a truly peaceful guy. That's a real statement because I know if it the is. separatists... <laughs> If the separatists really want to push the edge of the envelope with the aid of some big country, for example, which wants to use Taiwan as a proxy in its own geopolitical rivalry against China, then wait until you see what will happen. Reunification will be achieved. And China is the only uh, permanent member of the United Nations Security Council which has not yet achieved a complete reunification. Well, I'm, well, I, I'm always amused with this phrase, reunification, because if it's one China, then clearly it's not one China. Clearly you're accepting, by definition, if you need to reunify it. They are doing their own thing. And why this obsession with Taiwan? You are a country of 3.7 million square miles, a population 60 times that of Taiwan, economy 20 times the size of Taiwan. Why are you obsessed with Taiwan? Why not just leave them be? In terms of defending China's sovereignty and uh, territorial integrity, any inch of land is not one inch too much. Any one single person is not one person too many. So we need to achieve reunification. As Even President... though they don't want to be part of your country. 12% of the people of Taiwan say they want to reunify with China. 12%. I mean, Medi, you can't get more unpopular than that. In that Medi, it's not up to the people in Taiwan to decide about the one China policy. You're very blunt in your disregard for people's views, freedoms, dignity. You say don't, you don't care about what they think. You also said in an interview with the French newspaper Le Monde, once we get the island back, we'll have to ask everyone's origins. Those who have Japanese ancestry, who you baselessly say can constitute 10% of the population, will have to pledge loyalty to reunification in writing. Otherwise, we'll have to help them leave. You're basically calling for the ethnic cleansing of 2.3 million people in Taiwan. No, you remember back in 1945, when Japan unconditionally surrendered, a lot of people in Taiwan who originally came from uh, Japan, they were the rulers of uh, Taiwan at the time, they stayed behind because of the magnanimity of the Chinese nation. Now, several decades later, they account for about 10% of the local population true. in Taiwan. Now. If you really do your homework, you will realize that those die-hard Taiwanese separatists include many of these Japanese Chinese. Names, but okay. Well, but, but you would get rid of them. You would get rid of 2.3 no, million people. No, after the reunification, everyone in Taiwan need to make a pledge whether they acknowledge there is only one China and Taiwan is part of China. And if they don't make that pledge, those, they're out. Those who pledge wow. for the one China policy. They are local you didn't, By the way, citizens. you didn't say everyone. You said of Japanese descent. That is literally ethnic. Language. You're picking people by their ethnic heritage, making them do a loyalty test. Otherwise, they have to get out of the country. They've it is not a loyalty decades. test. Here, for example, in Britain, if you are a British citizen, you yeah. need to support the monarchy. You cannot say, no. I... No, I'm you standing can... in Britain. I don't support the monarchy. I don't like King Charles. No, you cannot say, no. I, I just said it. Maybe. I literally just said it. You cannot take any action to oppose the monarchy system. But I don't have to sign a pledge saying I support King Charles. Well, each country is different. Yeah, yeah. We are talking I about China. You, China is very different. Chi Let's talk human rights, Victor. You've called Uyghurs in China's Xinjiang province your brothers and sisters. How do you feel about the fact that at least half a million, some say more, of your brothers and sisters 
are being detained in camps by the Chinese government. That's 5% of the adult Uyghur population, one of the highest imprisonment detention rates in the world. Mehdi, the Uyghurs are proud ethnic group, one of the 56 ethnic nationalities in China. The Uyghurs, as far as I'm concerned, are my true brothers and sisters. I know many of them. I travel to Xinjiang regularly, and I talk to many other Uyghurs. Now, if anyone is serious about accusing China of practicing mass injustice to the Uyghurs, give me the evidence. I just think did. Human Rights Watch say a half a million people detained over the years in recent you years. You keep quote Human Rights Watch, and I tell you... Do you know they where they got those numbers from? I don't know. Can I, I tell you? Know. I don't know. I thought you were the expert on You've been to Xinjiang. You've spoken to Uyghurs. You never heard these numbers? I do not know where did they get the source. So their the source quotation. is the Xinjiang High People's Procuratorate, uh, which has published its own statistics, Xinjiang official body, which says it's convicted 540,826 people prosecuted in the region since 2017. The United Nations Office for Human Rights looked at satellite footage. They say 10 to 20 percent of the population. Amnesty estimates a million people in camps. Half a million is a conservative number. Mehdi, if you quote that organization, please be assured that that organization has been completely discredited for the false information they so come every, up with. So you, this, I love this game we're playing. You give, give me a source, I give you a source. They're discredited. They've no. said falsehoods. Mehdi, How can we, one thing... Let me ask you a question. How many people are in detention in Xinjiang? You give me a number. Listen, if you look I'm at listening. Xinjiang... You give me a number. If you look at... I do not have the number. Why not? Yeah. Oh, hold on. You can't say it's not half a million and then say you don't have a number. I have a number. Let I have me, sources. Let How me, many people do you think are detained? Let me give you my reason. No, no, no. I go to Xinjiang a lot. I travel almost throughout Xinjiang. So they're your brothers and sisters. Xinjiang. You go there a lot, but yes. you can't tell me how many people are in detention. Listen, they are happier. They enjoy their life. They enjoy their Muslim practices and traditions. Listen. How many people are in detention, Victor? Many. Let me be philosophical. No, don't be philosophical. If be numerical. Any, no. How many people are in detention. You said not to, if, no to if, half a million. How about, okay, let's let, let quarter of a million. Let me, let me, let me finish my point. Nope. If you answer anyone, the question. You if, can't filibuster, if, Victor, on this if show. If anyone how many promotes people do you think independence, they will be dealt with in court. Got it. Court. How many of them are in court? How many in detention? A very small minority. So stand. you don't have a number. You say they're all happy, but you won't let in independent investigators. You won't let in journalists Why to go not? there. Why not? They're I, not allowed I, to I go be, there. I will be happy to escort you to Xinjiang. Really? I can make that promise. Really? I will speak to the Chinese government. Here's the problem. To the Chinese embassy. I don't want to escort. I don't want minders. I want to go freely. Will you allow that? I do not make that decision. Oh! <laughs> a moment ago, you were going to make all sorts of interruptions. Suddenly I, I said, let me go freely and speak to Uyghurs freely. Can I do that? With no minders? I'll be happy. No Chinese government escort. I will be happy to make your case. Oh, just now you said you'd organise it. Now we're back. Make a case. Make you your can't case. guarantee. Here you have Rishi Sunak, the former prime minister, was called a pint-sized loser by a Labour politician. Um, no one in China has that kind of freedom to talk about their government, to talk about President Xi Jinping in that way. You can't say anything like that. You wouldn't dare say anything like that because you know what will happen to you when you go home. You know what will happen to your family. That's what China is. Mehdi, if you do anything, write anything, email or chat to your friends about taking anything action against, let's say, Prime Minister of Britain, That's President of the United States, I didn't say that. you'll be dealt with That's very swiftly. Said. Victor, you're a master in of straw China, That's In China, That's not what I said. In I said Rishi Sunak was called a pint-sized loser. Would you call Xi Jinping a pint-sized loser? Mehdi, each country has different sensitivities in UK. So you're admitting you can't criticise the Chinese no, government? No, no, no. You can criticise the government if you are positive in your <laughs> attitude. You can criticise yeah. the government if you're positive. Yes. Is that the new philosophy? No, if you can come up with your... You've got to come up with nice insults? No. What then? Constructive advice. Constructive for advice. For example, oh, I'm loving in this. dealing with the ageing population, what should be the government do? What should this governor should do? But you can't say they... the president's lied. He's a liar. No, he will be dealt with very swiftly in China. You cannot That's, say that. That is the most honest thing you've said tonight. Yes. I'll ask again tonight. Is he now... President for life, a true dictator. For the record, first of all, Chinese President Xi Jinping will never be president for life. There will be a time limit when it will be, will be handled according to the Chinese legal system and constitution. Secondly, there is no dictator in China. Why? Because dictatorship simply doesn't work. Democracy means modernization. And how can you explain 
profound transformation of China over the past 45 years in China if you have dictatorship or authoritarian rule. No, every leader in China will be put into a team and teamwork will be much more important Xi Jinping than run individualism. Team, Victor. Maybe previous presidents did, maybe Jiang Zemin or Hu Jintao. Everyone knows Xi Jinping has centralized power, consolidated power, got rid of term limits. You say there's a way to get rid of him, but there isn't actually a legal way to get rid of him. He's in power for life and he likes being a dictator. Why are we pretending? Mehdi, allow me to remind you, the Communist Party of China, which is the ruling party of China, has a membership of up to 100 million people. Yeah. It's well structured. Every province, every state-owned enterprise, etc., will have but a he's party the boss. cell. There's no division or debate within the Chinese Communist Party. Listen to me. No single person in China can dictate to a really? population of 1.4 billion people okay. and 100 million membership of the Communist Party of China. OK, let's test That's that. That's a mission Let, impossible. Let's test that proposition. The president won a vote last year. Won a vote. I'll put that in air quotes. Do you know the tally of last year's presidential vote in favour of Xi Jinping by the National People's Congress? Part of that structure you just advertised to us. What was the vote? Can you tell our audience here? I think it's up to about 100%. That doesn't... 2,952 to zero. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Could it's, you not find a few people just to make it look a little even? One or two? Maybe. It's Five? not surprising. It's not surprising. 2,952 to zero. It's that's one man rule, my friend. It's not surprising the Chinese system. Everyone supports the Chinese president. That's you just told us 10 oh. seconds ago there's this huge system, a big party, one guy, and then you're like, oh, no, but everyone supports him. Zero votes against him. One person out of 3,000 couldn't say, mm, Xi Jinping, not my guy. One. What if he is the guy for all the Communist Party of China? You what never if? know. You well, never know. if that's the case, then your entire first answer is redundant because it doesn't matter if there's 100 million people. No. They all have to follow the leader. No, he does command huge respect among the Chinese people as uh, well as... You say respect, I say fear. Do you know how many names were on the ballot papers that were given in 2013? How many names were on the ballot paper when they went to choose the president? Can you tell our audience? I think there is only one candidate. Yeah. There were no, no, no other names. That's, well, a real, that's a real secure leader. A guy who knows he has the confidence of his people. You get to vote, but only for me, and none of you can actually vote against me. Mehdi, we do not want to end up in a situation with six prime ministers in eight years. Yeah. So you prefer a dictatorship? No, we prefer a system that works for the benefit of the Chinese I'm, people. I've not said a word about what works or not. You've got great economic growth. Look at the But you're a dictatorship. Growth. There is no dictatorship, Mehdi. You just admitted you want me to, uh, that there's no repeat. name on the ballot paper, no votes against him, and they all just follow him. That's a dictatorship. When the king succeeds yeah. the queen, yes. how many candidates are there on the ballot paper? How many... How many Does uh, that make Britain not a democracy? Well, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm a Republican, so I think we should be a full democracy and get rid of the monarchy. And I can say that here. You can't say that in China. You cannot take any action against that. Yes, I can, actually. I can go out on the street, I can hold up a placard and say, let's get rid of King Charles. I can create a whole protest outside Buckingham Palace. You can't do that in China. You can't even put one other person's name on a ballot paper. That's how insecure your leader is. Betty, I'm a lawyer. In my capacity as a lawyer, yeah. I can give you a long list of things that you cannot do regarding the monarchy here in Britain. I'm not debating that. I'm saying that we have an elected government, we get to choose, we get to swap six prime ministers, God help us, but we get to pick. Everyone in this room who's a citizen gets to pick. Listen, you end up with your mini-budget, which but that's bankrupt a, the whole country. But that's country. an honest answer, Victor. <laughs> but, Victor, I admire that, because that's an honest answer. Your answer is, it's a dictatorship that works. At least say that. No. No, no, you can't. You keep dodging. One minute you say, I'm not it's dodging. not a dictatorship. Then I show you it is. You say, but it's working. We've got growth. Mehdi. Pick one. Mehdi, if that is your point, I will seriously urge you to do more homework about okay. how the Chinese system works. OK, let's talk about the because Chinese system, because I did a little bit of homework. A little bit of homework. It's, it's, it's did the... you know that Xi Jinping put his name in the Constitution? That's weird. Well... The leader yeah, of the country put his own name in the constitution while he's president. No one's done that since Mao. None of the other Chinese presidents, not Hu Jintao, not your old boss Deng Xiaoping, none of them did it. Did they? It's or am I wrong? wrong? It's wrong. Uh, Who did the it? The Chinese constitution has been most 
frequently amended compared with any other country. Am I wrong about what I just said with my Mao's little bit of homework? Mao's name was put into the constitution. That's what I said. Deng's name was put into not the constitution. Not while he was president. And Jiang Zemin's not name while he was, was put into the constitution. Not while they were sitting presidents, and you know that. Tell our crowd here, not while they were president. They didn't do it themselves. According to my recollection, each of not these names were put into the constitution not while, they were sitting while president. the leaders were still alive. OK, so I'm right. Mao not while they were president. Deng I love the little slip. Even Donald Trump, one of the great narcissists of our time, has not proposed yet putting his name into the US Constitution. If you are the president of China, you're elected without any opponents, no names on the ballot paper, zero votes against you, you put your name in the Constitution, six-year-olds are taught about Xi Jinping thought in primary school. That is not just a dictatorship, that is a cult of personality. I don't think China believes in personal... Uh, so why are six-year-olds learning about Xi Jinping thought? I'm pretty sure no six-year-olds learned about Liz Truss's mini-budget. The Chinese Tell. system is such that once you orient the country in one direction, everyone follows the suit. Do they follow or are they ordered to follow? They don't follow out of choice. It's, no. It's like a vehicle with four wheels. Here, you have four wheels aligned in different directions, okay. opposing directions. <laughs> In China, the four wheels of a car all lined up in one direction. Well, they don't. Going forward. Well, they don't, Victor. Let me give you an example. Former That's foreign, the Chinese way for, of doing it. Former Foreign Minister Qin Gang was removed from his post and has not been seen in public since June 2023. A few months later, China's Defence Minister, General Li Shangfu, disappeared from public view for months, has now been expelled from the party, accused of corruption. That's at least two ministers that disappeared just in the last year. This means China is really merciless in dealing with corruption of all kinds, even among the Your highest... Your foreign arrests. minister and defence minister. Imagine Antony Blinken and Lloyd Austin just disappeared tomorrow. We don't know where they are. We've never seen them again. That's not normal, Victor. Listen... Corruption is rampant How in China. How do we China. know they're corrupt? They just disappeared. Where's the trial? Allow Where's the me trial? To finish Victor? my point. Corruption of all kinds yep. in China need to be dealt with. So where's with the trial? Mercilessness. So where's the trial? Where's the trial of the former foreign minister? We don't even know where he is. Mehdi, those things you don't know yeah. doesn't mean doesn't happen. Where is the trial for this man you're just accusing of corruption? Qing Gang was my good friend for more than 20 years. Where is he then? He is involved in corruption. Where is he? And he is dealt with very swiftly. Where is he, Victor? Regardless of He's your the good friend. You don't know where he is. Regardless where of the Where is the former foreign minister of, of China? Position. This is not a hard question. We're not asking where Rehan's brother in the middle of Xinjiang is that you can dodge. Where is the former foreign minister of China who disappeared? And by the way, he wasn't accused of corruption. The spokesman came out and said he has health reasons. Then corruption came later, by the way. Where did he go, your friend? That means there is a process, and the process so The process is starts not with one lie, that he's ill, and then the next lie is he's corrupt. He may be ill. You never know. I mean, he's probably ill after he's been in a Chinese prison. He may like, be ill now. Um, yeah. You never know. But, exactly. But at least where Qing is he? Gong lost his job Victor, because where is he? of his corruption. Last question. That's where, the point. Where is he? He's somewhere in China. You will never see him. <laughs> He is among the 1.4 billion people. And no, it's not just him. There's many other people who have disappeared. The previous defence minister disappeared. The Ministry of Industry and Technology disappeared. The former Interpol president disappeared. In China, you just disappear if they don't like you. That's I'm, the rule of law in China. I'm so in fact, happy they disappear because if they keep doing their job, they will bring greater disaster Victor, be careful what you wish for, because everyone's watching this show, and if you get something wrong tonight, maybe you disappear. <laughs> if I disappear, I hope you will bail me out. <laughs> I'd have to find you first, and China is apparently a big country. My question is, as a dissident from Hong Kong, knowing that I cannot express freely in Hong Kong or in the UK without risking other people in trouble, I also know that you just now made claims about there is free speech in China, and it's possible to criticize the Chinese government just now again. Can you please demonstrate that free speech and tell us? What are Xi Jinping's two worst mistakes in the past five years? Great question. If you can demonstrate to us that it's okay to criticize Xi Jinping, the Chinese government, and China, or even just say Xi Jinping kind of resembles Winnie the Pooh, would be good enough for me. Thank you. Victor, do you want to take that question? Well, thank you. I would say uh, China need to make more prompt, uh, take more prompt actions in dealing with the dramatic uh, aging population in China and the dramatic. Uh, demographic decline. Do you think Xi Jinping's to blame for not being fast enough on aging? No, I think uh, the whole Chinese government, ah, including the Xi Central uh, Committee, State Council, uh, local government, need to take actions quickly to reverse that dramatic uh, aging population problem and demographic okay. decline. We're not going to get a criticism out of you. Let's go back to the audience. I would like to ask you a question on Tibet. Tibet, 
after 74 years of Chinese rule, is still under lockdown. No journalists, no individual tourists, okay. even Tibetans are not allowed to see their families. What is China afraid of to keep, keep Tibet in such a tight control and Tibetans in such an inhuman existence in our own country? Sir, ever since the Yuan Dynasty, if not even earlier, Tibet has been part of China. Through different dynasties, different historical periods, I can assure you, during your lifetime and mine, Tibet will always be part of China. Why are you so therefore, insistent therefore, on ruling places that don't want to be ruled by China? No, no Tibet well, is part of China. We've been through Tibet, China. Taiwan, they're not happy in Xinjiang. Tibet being part of China doesn't depend on whether you like it or not. It's a megatrend of our time. A megatrend. And you need to accept that before you will feel free to go back to China. So you to don't... visit Tibet. You sound like you're threatening the man. No, I'm not. <laughs> you, you said you have to accept that before you can go back. You live he's in from peace. that place. You live in peace in Britain, that's good. But he's a refugee. But if you want to go back to Tibet, acknowledge Tibet is part of China, period. And what if he doesn't? He can't go back to his home. You cannot go back. Because China doesn't want to see anyone advocating for the independence of Tibet. Why can't no China... No way. There will ne that will never Victor, happen. Victor, why can't China rest on its own merits? Why the bullying and the threats? We're going to break you to pieces, Taiwan. You can't go back until you sign this document or that declaration. Why the insecurity? Second biggest economy in the world, major power. You sound so insecure. China security rests on the principle that there is only one China. And Taiwan is part of China, Tibet is part of China, and Xinjiang is part of China. Period. And even if the people there don't want to be part of it, you don't give a damn. The majority of the people live happily as Chinese How do we know? citizens. Did you do a vote? I will go with you oh, to we're gonna, Tibet. We're going to go to Tibet and, and we're going to talk to all the Tibetans. And I can go to Taiwan. Tibet, but the guy who's from there can't go there. You sound ludicrous when you say this stuff, I'm sorry to say. Let us go back to the audience. For many in the Uyghur diaspora, we have not been allowed contact with our families at home within the Uyghur Autonomous Region since 2017, when Chinese government started detaining more than 3 million plus Uyghurs into their high-tech surveillance concentration camps. My question to you, sir, what's the Chinese government trying to hide from us? Second, okay, why can't we, why can't we not talk freely with our families. Okay. Another, yet another Uyghur. So many Uyghurs, the same story, the same questions. I'm always very happy to see wherever I go a Uyghur person, because I do consider the Uyghurs as my brothers and sisters. On one condition, a though... Part of me is starting to feel sorry for your actual brothers and sisters, no, I'll be on honest one, on one, On one condition, though, Uyghurs need to acknowledge that Xinjiang is part of China. That's a big precondition. If you do not accept so that on, precondition, hold on, hold on. you are not my brother or sister. Hold on, so he that's fine. You don't have to be brothers and sisters, but can he not talk to his family? It depends on where your family is. <laughs> there are indeed Uyghur separatists who want to promote separatism of Uyghur, turn of But, but uh, what about the people who are not separatists Xinjiang, who just disappear? Turn Xinjiang into East Turkmenistan. This will never happen. Listen to this. Call your friends to stick to the One China policy. He just wants to talk on the phone to a family member. Two years old, seven years, I didn't speak to my mother. I want to speak to my mother. I am British Uyghur, I want to speak to my mother. Do you understand? Literally, China support China. One China policy, support Victor. Xinjiang being part of China. Victor. Period. Do you have no heart to see this man who can't speak to his 82-year-old mother? No, is I she a separatist? Your, your, I wish your mother is here in this hall talking to you and... Uh, Why don't you let her go? Us, so then she, maybe you know? she could. But then, on one condition, in China, zero tolerance of any separatist movement... An 82-year-old woman anyone. is a threat to China. What does that say about China? I hope she is not a separatist, but if she is a separatist, she will be dealt with by law. Period. Victor, before we finish, I have one question for you. We're in the UK, we're in Conway Hall, historic free speech society. Could we do a show like this? Could I interview you like this? Could Rehan come be on a panel like this? 
in Beijing, in, say, the Beijing International Convention Center. Can we do a show like this? Audience members freely ask questions. You take questions from everyone. No one's vetted. No one's threatened. Can we do this in Beijing? Maybe if you ask me to line up all the support, you will do that. Really, I can assure you that. A show where every audience member gets to speak freely. No one turns up at their house afterwards. For many European countries, you do not need a visa to go to China. Pick up your luggage no, and not buy asking, a ticket. I'm not asking foreigners. Victor, I'm not asking foreigners to come. I'm saying, could a Chinese audience turn up and ask whatever they want, criticize Xi Jinping, criticize the government, ask you questions, talk about Uyghurs? Could you do it in Beijing? Mehdi, in China, don't criticize our president. So we couldn't do this. Show. Unless you well, have I'm glad you a answered very the question. positive, constructive proposal to make. From the Criticism horse's, from the horse's mouth. The, don't criticize unless it's positive. Criticism is not the only goal. Criticism with constructive purposes is a goal. will be a better free speech. Free speech is a goal we cherish on this show. I'm glad to have offered you a platform for spe free speech. I wish you could offer me one back. Victor Gao, thank you for your time. Thank you to the audience in Conway Hall. And thank you to everyone at home for watching this episode of Head to Head.